Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Manling Williams? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Man Ling Sang Williams was born in 1979 in Los Angeles County, California. Her family was from Taiwan. Man Ling went by the name Ling. She had a learning disability and had a tough time in school. Despite this, in 1998, she graduated from high school. When Ling was 19, she met a man named Neil Alastair Williams. He had been born in 1980. Neil grew up in Whittier, California and had one sister. Ling and Neil started a romantic relationship, and Ling became pregnant. The couple had a son named Devin on July 26, 2000. In 2001, they married in a courthouse and would later have a formal wedding. The Williams family lived in Rowan Heights, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. Their home was a condominium owned by Ling's family members. On September 27, 2003, the couple had another son. His name was Ian. Ling worked as a waitress at a nearby restaurant. Eventually, she was there full-time. Neil worked at Disneyland in Anaheim, California. The couple struggled financially and sometimes received help from Neil's mother. Neil was described as a geek who loved Star Wars, Star Trek, and played computer video games excessively. He also had an intense interest in samurai swords and had several of them in his residence. Ling was extremely unhappy with Neil's lack of motivation to earn money. She was tired of the condominium and wanted a four-bedroom house. In early 2006, Neil quit his job at Disneyland and started working from home as a commissioned salesperson for a life insurance company. This was part of a plan to achieve financial freedom. But as it turns out, Neil was not good at sales. After awkwardly approaching people he knew and trying to sell them insurance, he gave up and became a stay-at-home father. Neil was obsessed with computer video games and spent much of his time playing them. He did not cook or clean, and the condominium was extremely messy and cluttered. It was a scene of abject squalor. Ling was extremely unhappy with Neil by this point. They would routinely scream and fight. The neighbors could hear them. At one point, Ling suggested that they get divorced, but Neil did not want that outcome because he was afraid of how it would affect the children. In June 2007, Ling used the social media platform MySpace to find a former lover from high school. His name was John. She contacted him and they had dinner together. Ling told John that she wanted to divorce Neil. In July 2007, Ling reached out to John again, this time to arrange a sexual encounter. Not long after this affair started, John ended it. He told Ling that he was not interested in a long-term relationship with someone who was married. But if she ever divorced, things might be different between them. They could explore a romantic relationship if and when that time came. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On August 8, 2007, at about 7.30 a.m., Ling's neighbors called 911 after seeing her running through the streets, screaming. When the police arrived moments later, they found 29-year-old Ling Williams outside her residence. She appeared to be distraught. Inside the condominium, they found her 27-year-old husband, Neil, dead in an upstairs hallway. He had been hacked with a samurai sword and sustained about 92 cuts. Seven-year-old Devin was found dead on the top bunk of his bunk bed. He was under a SpongeBob SquarePants comforter. Three-year-old Ian was found dead in the lower bunk under a teddy bear quilt. It appeared as though they had been suffocated with a pillow. On Ling's computer, the police found a typed message indicating Neil's desire to bring an end to his own life. The note suggested that Neil was the killer of his two sons. The police interviewed Ling Williams. Here's what she told them. At about 11 p.m. on August 7, she went out with co-workers to a restaurant. When she arrived home at about 12.30 a.m., now on August 8, Neil was playing video games. She went to bed and believed that Neil joined her at about 1 a.m. 
Ling had trouble sleeping. She went to her vehicle at about 4 a.m. When she left the condominium, she did not lock the door behind her. Ling drove to a ridge to watch the sunrise and then returned home. After entering, she walked upstairs and found Neil in the hallway. There was blood everywhere. She slipped on the blood a couple of times. She then went back downstairs, ran outside, and screamed for help. Ling told the police that Neil had been engaging in an affair for the last 13 months and denied that she was having an affair. As the interview was being conducted, the police at the crime scene found a cigarette box in Ling's vehicle. It had Neil's blood on it. It was not surprising that Ling had blood on her based on her story about how she discovered Neil's body, but according to Ling, she never returned to her vehicle after the discovery. How did Neil's blood end up on the cigarette box in her vehicle? Ling did not have an explanation for this. Eventually, she confessed that she was the killer. Here is the second story that Ling supplied to investigators. Ling took a pillow and suffocated Ian in the lower bunk before doing the same thing to Devin in the upper bunk. After committing these two murders, she went out with friends to a restaurant. Her plan was for Neil to discover the bodies of her children and bring an end to his own life in response. When Ling came home, she was disappointed to find Neil in the realm of the living. He was asleep in their bed. It appeared as though he never checked on his sons before he went to bed, or if he did, he didn't notice that they were dead. Ling put on latex gloves and retrieved the heaviest samurai sword that Neil possessed. She attacked him as he was sleeping. He immediately woke up, and Ling continued the attack. She chased him down the hallway, slicing his back as he ran away. Neil begged for his life, but Ling kept on attacking him with the sword. When she was satisfied that he was dead, she disposed of her bloody clothing and the latex gloves in a nearby dumpster. She then drove to a ridge to watch the sunrise. Ling Williams was arrested and charged with murder. On November 4, 2010, she was found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder. During the penalty phase, the jury deadlocked 8-4 to four in favor of the death penalty. Despite family members on both sides asking the prosecutor to settle for life in prison, the state retried the penalty phase. In August of 2011, the jury unanimously agreed on the death penalty for Ling. In January of 2012, Man Ling Williams was sentenced to death. Considering the current political climate in California as it relates to the death penalty, execution is probably low on Man Ling's list of concerns. There has not been an execution in the state since 2006, and the last execution of a woman occurred in 1959. Despite the implications of the name death row, dying on death row in California usually does not occur due to execution. Now moving to my analysis. The criminal case against Manling Williams was never about guilt or innocence. Her defense conceded that she was the killer. Instead, it was about premeditation. The state argued that Ling started planning the murders two months before they occurred. Her defense argued that she acted in the heat of the moment. There was no premeditation. This brings me to the question, were these murders premeditated? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that they were premeditated, starting with the factors that support this theory. Ling had an affair not long before the murders, but her affair partner broke it off, not wanting to be in a relationship with someone who was married. Ling put a note on her computer, making it look like Neil brought an end to his own life. She wore latex gloves. She disposed of those gloves along with bloody clothing. Ling committed two murders and did not commit the third murder until hours later. Even if she wanted to argue that the first two murders were caused by extreme emotional disturbance, how can she make the same argument about the third murder? During her interview with the police, Ling said that she killed her children with the hope that Neil would harm himself. This is consistent with premeditation. Starting two months before the murders, Ling told other people that she was having dreams of Neil harming them. This makes it seem like she was preparing to frame Neil for the murders that she was going to commit. Moving to the factors that contradict the premeditation theory, when Ling was a child, Department of Children and Family Services found that she had been mistreated. One acquaintance described her as very emotionally unstable. If she premeditated Neil's murder, why did she use a samurai sword? 
That's pretty much it for the factors contradicting the premeditation theory. When considering all the evidence, do I believe that Manling Williams premeditated the murders? Yes, I believe she planned the murders in advance. She wanted to eliminate her family and start a new life. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Ling was self-centered, arrogant, sadistic, envious, and had a sense of entitlement. She believed that Neil was going to be a better provider than he turned out to be. Ling became angry because Neil would not supply her the finer things in life, and she was tired of his constant computer video game playing. She viewed him as lazy and without a future. Neil became very connected to his sons, but Ling did not. She viewed her children and her husband as belonging in the same category. All of them represented obstacles to her happiness. Ling did not see herself as the source of her own happiness. She believed that her happiness would come from an external source. This is why she searched for a former boyfriend. When the former boyfriend rejected her because she was married, Ling decided to remedy that situation. She came up with a bizarre plan to murder her children, believing that Neil would then take himself out of the picture. It's not clear why she believed this. The attack on Neil was messier than expected and involved Ling striking him on the back, yet she still wanted people to believe that Neil was the killer. How could he have possibly struck himself on the back with a sword? Ling was not thinking clearly. The note on Ling's computer and the cigarette box containing Neil's blood destroyed her chances of escaping responsibility. Ling Williams is a very peculiar offender. Female family annihilators are rare, and most of them do not have any plans for after the murders. Ling had this fantasy about reuniting with a former lover. Getting away with the murders was a key part of her plan. I think what happened here is that Ling was extremely cold and callous. She thought of her children in a manner which was consistent with psychopathy. To her, they were just objects. Killing them was simply a way to achieve a goal. There was no connection to them. There was no remorse. It's possible that when she was young, Ling felt as though her caregivers did not love her. According to the government, she had been mistreated as a child. Maybe from her upbringing, Ling came to believe that children were not to be loved. Many people with psychopathic traits still appreciate consequences, even if those consequences do not make sense to them based on their feelings. Ling, however, did not appreciate the consequences of her behavior. It never occurred to her that she could be caught. She was obsessed with her own desires to the exclusion of all rational thought. Now moving to my final thoughts. Neil was in a tough situation because he could not appreciate that his marriage was toxic. There was no way he could have predicted what happened based on his low level of insight. He knew that Ling wasn't happy, and he tried to earn a little bit more money, but ultimately he was content playing video games. While Neil was distracted pursuing his video game playing and sword collecting dreams, Ling was willing to pursue her desires with even more vigor and maliciousness. However bad she believed that she was being treated by Neil, Ling was willing to go much further. Ling selected a sword, which was a symbol of Neil's quirkiness and aloofness, as the instrument of his demise. In her mind, if he was trying to live by the sword, he would die that way too. Ultimately, Ling was able to avoid the same fate as her family, despite being sent to death row. Those are my thoughts in the case of Manling Williams. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.